Vu of Envu Films again, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And today, of course, as you can see in the title, I have the Fuji X-T4 right here in my hands that I bought by myself. No, I am not sponsored by Fujifilm, and obviously I have a Sony Alpha shirt, and I am not sponsored by them either. I just friend of mine he gifted me the shirt i'm not sponsored by sony so hopefully this doesn't seem like a biased first impressions from me uh i have a bunch of sony cameras i've been using sony all this time as of right now i'm trying to get into the fujifilm system to make use of the 4k 60 frames per second ibis and all of that goodness that comes with the fujifilm xt4 uh what i have been doing this whole day, uh, I've been pretty much just testing it out. I've been testing out the in-body image stabilization. I've been testing out the autofocus of the camera and just going through all the menus and stuff like that. Keep in mind, I am a videographer primarily. I do do some photography and I um, am not gonna give too much uh, photography type input yet as this, this is just a first impressions and this is very video based but it can't apply to photography because it does test out the autofocus of the fujifilm xt4 as you can see from that montage i did and of course i'm holding it right here i have a small rig cage on the fuji xt4 why do i have that uh let's just go into the ergonomics of this um camera body i do not like the ergonomics that much it is improved over the X-T3. I used X-T3 for a couple months before I um, ultimately just sold it because I just felt like I was gonna use it. There's no gigs right now due to, you know what, I have a bunch of Sony cameras. Uh, that's all I really needed at the time. Uh, but now, Fujifilm X-T4 has finally been delivered to me and I gotta tell you guys, um, I prefer the Sony grips. Maybe it's just because I am a Sony fanboy douchebag, but really I just, prefer the Sony grips. Even on the uh, Sony Alpha 6600, which is more of a competitor to the X-T3, maybe even to this, but I feel like the grip is, has a nice thickness to it. And this cage helps me grip the camera better. And I, I like the overall feeling of the camera with this cage on it. Uh, the grip for the X-T4 just seems a little bit small. This is just a first impressions. Um, that's my thoughts on the ergonomics. Everyone already knows the specs of the camera. It's capable of 4K 60 with a slight crop, even though the sensor is already APS-C, it is cropped in an additional 1.2 times in 4K 60 frames per second, which is not a big deal. It shoots 10-bit internal 420 uh, in 4K 60, um, which is really what I want the camera for. It's not some, something Sony does not provide at all in any of their mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras. And I am a primarily a videographer and I really like the, having the flexibility of having 4k 60 uh when shooting certain sequences especially for weddings and other cinematic b-rolls whatever you want to call it one of the things that's really important to me for videography in these um handheld cameras is the autofocusing system so what i went ahead and did today uh you know as a first impressions is i tested the autofocus tracking um on the lenses that i currently own for the x mount uh, i have here the 23 f the 35 millimeter f2 the 50 millimeter f2 the 16 millimeter f 1.4 and i have the uh ef mount sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8 mounted on the um finger ef to fx pro 2 adapter for x mount system why don't i have the 23 uh, 35 56 millimeter um, f1.4 f1.2 lenses for the uh, Fuji film system uh, I really don't like the autofocus of those lenses um, they are subpar in both videography and um, photography everyone has different expectations and preferences for autofocus on their lenses and for me I'm coming from Sony that um, you know that's one thing to think about I'm not coming from Nikon Canon or another Fuji camera. I'm coming from Sony, and Sony is really, really good at autofocus in video and photo. And all of their lenses across the board performs exceptionally well in autofocus. 
Um, so that is the expectation that I have for autofocus. And the 23 and 35 millimeter f1.4, as well as the 56 millimeter f1.2 for X mount system, uh, is very bad. That's just my opinion on it. Um, and even the photos on the 23 and 35 millimeter um, f1.4 lenses, when I looked at the photos, uh, it just wasn't blowing, you know, my mind. It wasn't that sharp. Uh, maybe it's because it's like older lenses because I'm comparing this to what I'm used to and the Sony lenses are just spectacular probably because they're newer technology or what have you but they're just super sharp uh, great contrast great colors all that stuff and every time I take photos of them I'm just kind of like wow this is really amazing whereas when I use the 23 f1.4 and 35 f1.4 Fuji I was left a bit disappointed so anyways uh, that's my thought on that that's why I have the f2 lenses I found that the f2s uh, perform very well uh, with X-T3 and autofocus tracking and here is the X-T4 uh, focus tracking test on those four lenses. So here I am walking up towards my door as if I am about to deliver some compound chicken to the house, looking shady, waiting for the owner to come out and give me the cash for this Chinese food. But really I'm just walking back and forth like a complete YouTube douchebag of the century uh, to demonstrate the autofocus tracking. Um, here's 1835. I'm going to do it at 18 millimeters, 24 millimeters, and 35 millimeters. I was doing a bit of hunting earlier. Um, the 1835 is a great lens, it's very versatile. Uh, it performs well. Uh, autofocus tracking is good enough on the uh, finger adapter. I feel like the 1835 performs better on the MC11 adapter for the Sony Alpha 6600 or any E mount for that matter. See, as it hunted right there. Um, but overall, very good performing autofocus tracking for a adapted lens. Um, you know, I, I would notice that it was locked onto the eye quite a bit, but that's just the box. It's not doesn't necessarily mean it's focused, but overall it worked quite well. Way better than Panasonic anything. Um, here's the Fuji 23 F2. Again, walking up like a complete YouTube douchebag, tube douche, and walking back. Um, you know, is it as good as Sony um, based on my experience and based what I'm used to? No, it is not as good as Sony, but um, it's probably not as good as Canon either, but it's definitely better than Panasonic uh, by about a thousand miles. Um, this is very usable autofocus on most situations. I'm not really quite sure why 35 millimeters hunting quite a bit here, but um, I like this lens a lot too. Um, here's probably my favorite lens out of all of them is this 50 millimeter. It's super sharp. Uh, as you can see, it's focusing quite well, um, and I just I just like the focal length. I like the added compression of the telephoto. It's you know 50 millimeters really around 75 millimeters in APS-C. So um, overall, not too bad. I also went ahead and did some tests with the in-body image stabilization. And no, these aren't tests where like I'm running around like a complete douchebag, all right? Like most people who film using IBIS, they walk carefully. They carefully maneuver. They make sure they're as stable as possible. And that's what I try to do with some of these uh, footage sequences here. Um, you know, these are shot 4K 60 and I might show you how it looks like once some auto, once some um, slow motion is applied to it. Um, so here is the IBIS test. And so now this is the IBIS test. Um, I'm just kind of walking back and forth. Keep in mind, this is a 50 millimeter, so it's quite telephoto. The more telephoto lens, the more shake you will see. So IBIS is actually really good. Um, and here it is slowed down to 40%, it's, uh, it's 4K 60. I think it looks quite good. Um, I, didn't, I did not use the Electronic image image stabilization. This is all just regular in-body image stabilization test. No added stabilization or anything. Um, it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, looks a lot better than 
Sony IBIS. And here it is in slow motion, um, you know, just using parts that I think would be usable for uh, when you're making some type of montage or video while walking. This is me actually walking heel toe with my feet. Um, you know, this is played back at 40% speed and uh, it's looking really good, guys. Like, this is very usable if you're doing just like B rolls or whatever. Um, this is me trying to do some walking, and this here is where it's not working too well. I don't know if it's my handling, but um, I'm still walking here with my heel toe, and this is quite usable, um, especially at 40% speed here. Uh, you know, great to use for any type of B roll use if you're doing some type of documentary film, wedding film. Um, I've already switched over to 35 millimeter here. Um, there's just some more walking and 40% uh, speed. No warp stabilization added. This is simply just adding slow motion. And uh, now I switch to the 16 millimeter. Um, this is also a good test for the autofocus tracking on like the tree branch. It's actually doing quite well, and it looks very nice um, at this the 40% speed. Here it is, the regular speed. And here it is at 40% speed and IBIS and tracking is quite it's quite good. Um, I think this is very usable for handheld work, uh, to be quite honest, um, as long as you know what you're doing. Um, here is just walking with the camera pointed up. It seems to do really well. Uh, it actually looks good here at just regular speed, but then once you put 40% speed, it looks even better. Um, Again, there's no warp stabilization. This is just standard IBIS. No electronic stabilization added. No warp stabilization added in post. This is simply just doing slow motion at 40% speed. 4K 60p on um, the Fuji X-T4. And here I'm just trying my best to walk straight. Um, and heel toe, heel toe, you know, trying to keep steady. It's okay, I mean, not bad maybe some warp stabilization in post would do some good work to it and then next i'm gonna go ahead and test out the vlogging capabilities of this camera see how stable it is while just walking casually um here i mounted the 16 millimeter f 1.4 um which i'll further test in a bit but uh it's the widest lens i have um, for the x mount and usually you want to vlog with wide lenses so here is the vlog test and here I'm looking like a complete tube douche vlogger in front of my neighbor's house. And just some quick uh, rolling shutter tests. Looking pretty standard, not as bad as the Sony Alpha 6600, but it's okay. So it wouldn't be a full first impressions unless I actually filmed this whole YouTube douchebag setup with the Fuji X-T4, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's kind of weird. I'm used to doing a flip up screen versus a flip out screen that the X-T4 offers. So we'll see how this goes. I'm actually using the 16 millimeter Fuji lens um, at f1.4 right now. The last time I did this on the X-T3, the 16 millimeter f1.4 was hunting a lot. It was focusing to the back. It was hunting for my face. Uh, it was quite confused. Uh, based on the screen, it looks like the Fuji X-T4 is handling it quite well. Uh, that'll be yet to be seen once I go put this footage into the computer and start editing it. But overall, uh, my first impressions of the Fujifilm X-T4 is positive. Um, autofocus seems to work as expected. Um, definitely better than the X-T3, it seems like right now. IBIS uh, works great. Um, it's better than Sony IBIS 100%. Um, there's a lot of just me hand holding the camera while actually walking, doing the heel toe as if I'm using a gimbal, but I'm just using the camera handheld. And the footage, as you saw, looks quite good. Um, using the camera walking and filming with intent, knowing what you're gonna do with it, especially if you're you know, um, going to apply slow motion um, to some of the footage. It looks fantastic. It almost looks gimbal-like um, in some of the shots. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the uh, in-body image stabilization. I didn't even try the uh, electronic image stabilization yet. I'll try more of that uh, 
later. Um, some general complaints I have with the camera is the menus. Um, there's a lot of things in there. Maybe it's probably because I'm just not as familiar as it. I'm not as familiar with it as I am with Sony bodies, but uh, there was some stuff that I actually set and I couldn't figure out how to set the aperture with the aperture ring on the lens. And I spent half an hour trying to figure that out. I finally did. I had to turn off something. I don't even know what happened, but in movie mode, I couldn't control the aperture with the uh, aperture ring on the lens and it was driving me crazy. Um, just the random stuff here and there. That's mostly like the user error. Obviously, I know what it does now, but other things of note, huge improvement. I've been playing around with this camera a lot. I didn't even fully charge the battery yet. And the battery seems to be lasting a long time. We all know, we all knew this, this small little Asian size battery here uh, compared, this is the old X-T3 battery compared to the new battery. This new battery is, seems to be working great. Probably comparable to the Sony Z batteries on the A7 III and the new Alpha 6600, um, but uh, We'll see uh, how that goes as soon as I get more in-depth testing. Why did I not call this like a full-blown review uh, versus just my initial impressions? It's because I'm just testing it out. This is not a full review because I'm not actually using it on like a shoot. I need real-world tests, real-world shoots before I could like review it. So I'm actually gonna just let you decide on what you think about um, the results that I got and my quick test. I didn't really spend too much time with it, obviously, but. Um, you know, I could have done a lot more, kind of got lazy, didn't feel like getting too crazy with it. Um, but I really want to be able to use this camera in a real shoot, uh, real world situations, stressful situations, not ideal light, having to run and gun, you know, such as shooting a wedding or something like that, to get like a real feel for what it is before I do like a legit review. But overall, my initial impressions are very positive. Or great, footage looks great, uh, just as expected. Um, but I'm very impressed with the IBIS and so far I'm liking the autofocus. Um, it's definitely usable for me. Um, yeah. So please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Um, I will be testing the uh, Fuji. I will be testing the Viltrox 23 and 33 millimeter f1.4 soon. Um, it's on order and it should be delivered. I don't know, hopefully within the next month. And I'll be doing a review on those two lenses with X-T4. So please subscribe. And until next time, lighten up.